We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. We are privileged to be called sons and daughters of the Most High God. Hallelujah. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies to long my fears are gone see I'm no longer songs of 
Welcome to Embassy City. I'm so grateful you've joined us this weekend as we step into God's words. I love you guys so much and I miss you guys, uh, but we got some things on the horizon uh, uh, about getting back together that you're going to be excited about. At least I hope you're going to be excited about it, but I'll give you more information about that next weekend. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to the book of Joshua, chapter number one. The book of Joshua, chapter number one. We are still in a series called Reentry. And we've been talking about for the entire month how we are re-entering spaces and places in our lives, in our surroundings, where everything is the same except us. God is doing some healing on the inside of us. He's calibrating our thinking so that when we re-enter the spaces of our lives, the places of our lives, that we come in to those spaces and places with a mind that has been prepared by God to upset the world. Many of us are coming out of quarantine. Many states are reopening. I don't know where you are in the world, but wherever you are, I want you to have a great reentry. So we're going to go into the word of God, the book of Joshua, chapter number one. I want to give a shout out to all of the ambassadors watching abroad Thankful for everyone that meets in this physical location, but thankful for all of our ambassadors around the world that are partnering with us to upset the world. So Joshua chapter number one, starting at the first verse, here's what it says. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant. We just talked about Moses last week. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's good stuff. If you're taking notes on this message, the title of this message is two words. Keep yourself. Last week it was be yourself. This week it is keep yourself. I want to talk to you about what it means to keep your self. Bow your heads, let's pray over the word, shall we? Holy Spirit, I pray that you keep us. Amen. So I want to talk about Joshua. I want to talk about the amazing uh, uh, responsibility that was placed on his life after the death of Moses. I told you that we've been talking about Reentries that 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 Moses uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the fact that Moses had to leave Egypt only to reenter Egypt to bring the people out of Egypt to the place where God had told him to be. Now we're dealing with Joshua. And in Joshua's case, 
Joshua had already spied out the land of Canaan and come back to camp with the Israelites. But because of the Israelites disobedience at the time, it meant that they had to travel around for about 40 more years. But at the end of that 40 years, Joshua is now making a reentry into the promised land with God's promised people in back of them. An amazing responsibility. A huge feat is before him. And he understands that in order for him to be successful, he is going to need God's help. When you're stepping into a season, when you're reentering society, when you're reentering a season of your life that you had to withdraw from and you're about to walk into the blessings and the promises of God, how do we keep ourselves when success comes? How do we keep ourselves when prosperity comes upon us? How do we keep ourselves when God opens up doors of influence to us? How do we keep ourselves? You see, sometimes we spend so much time talking about surviving the wilderness, uh, uh, getting out of bondage, that, that we never turn our attention to what happens when God actually blesses you. What happens when success actually comes to you? What happens when you get the promotion? How do you handle it when the business takes off? How do you handle it when you've gone from one uh, uh, socioeconomic status to another socioeconomic status? How, how do you how do you handle the, the, the success of life? God's blessings. You've prayed about it, but now it starts happening. How do we keep ourselves? That's what I want to talk about today. And so if you have uh, uh, your pens and your paper ready. If you got your 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 phones ready, your iPads ready, however you're taking notes. Some of y'all old school still got a laptop on your lap. However you are taking notes today, take notes. Why? I think I heard y'all because nerds rule the world. All right. So if you're taking notes on this message, I want to give you the three things that you need to keep yourself. The three things to keep yourself. And I'm so excited to get into this because after reading the first nine verses of uh, Joshua, you, there's a context there and there is a very clear, clearly communicated uh, a set of instructions that are given to Joshua by which he will experience and have success on the endeavor that he has to take the promised land. So point number one, please write this down. The first thing you need to have to keep yourself is you need to keep yourself submitted. This is the first way you keep yourself. The first way that you keep yourself is to keep yourself submitted. Here's what it says in uh, Joshua chapter number one, verse number seven. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Can I just stop right there? Uh, 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 I, I've been in church long enough and, and maybe some of you all have been as well. I have been in church long enough to hear uh, when there's been a transition in leadership or, or when, when, when someone's uh, a season has come to an end and, and, and the new person comes into uh, uh, authority or into position uh, in the church that I hear a lot of people say uh, and preach Moses is dead. It's, it's to uh, imply that whatever uh, 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 happened before is gone and it's dead. And now I'm here. I'm in leadership and I'm doing a new thing. This couldn't be a, a more egregious misrepresentation of the context of Joshua chapter number one. Because when you read Joshua chapter one, it was God who says, Moses, my servant is dead. Joshua never utters those words. He understands that leadership has been transitioned to him. It happened at the end of Deuteronomy. Moses does it in the front, in front of uh, all the people. He does it in public. He transfers the leadership from himself 
to Joshua. So all the children of Israel knew that 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 Joshua was the new leader of Israel. Joshua wasn't in a power struggle. Joshua wasn't trying to prove that he's the man now. He accepted the responsibility before Moses's death. But God is the one who says, Moses, my servant is dead. But look at what he says in verse number seven. Be sure, be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Here's what he's saying. Joshua, even though your mentor is dead, keep yourself submitted to the words that your mentor spoke. Even though he is not in your life anymore, don't let his words leave your head. Don't let his words leave your heart. It goes on to say, do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. And then I love what it says here. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Here's what God says. Hey, listen, uh, uh, you need to pay attention to what Moses taught you. You don't need to deviate it. You don't need to move from the right or the left of it because you will not have success if you are not submitted. This is good to me. I'm going to say it again. You will not have success if you are not submitted to authority. Now, this has been a principle that I have executed in my life for the last 24 years that I've been in ministry. There has been no time in my life that I did not have spiritual authority that I was submitted to and accountable to. From the time that I gave my life to Jesus Christ, January 14th of 1996, I was submitted to my pastors who also happened to be my parents, Charles and Maxine Ross. Those were my pastors. My mother was the senior pastor of God's Way Holiness Fellowship. My father was ordained as well. They were my spiritual uh, 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 accountability and I was submitted to their spiritual authority. I started preaching a month after I got saved and they instructed me that they wanted me to preach once a month inside the house, inside of the church uh, that I was attending, which was God's way. And I preached there from February until December of of 1996. And then they came to me and said, "Uh, uh, we believe that there's a calling on your life We believe that God has anointed you to teach and preach his word and we release you and we and we suggest that if other people call you to preach at their churches, that you should go preach at their churches. I had no clue anybody would ever want me to come preach at their church across the street, let alone around the whole world. Uh, uh, But they saw a gifting in me and they they stewarded that gifting in their own house first. And I was submitted there and then they gave me a blessing and released me to go preach at other churches. And the reason why I was effective when I went to go preach at other churches is because I had been released by the people I was spiritually submitted to. It's very, very important that you understand that when God calls you to do something, that he is not going to make you do it as a lone ranger. He is not going to make you do it as a renegade. He is not going to make you do it in such a cavalier way that you are not accountable to anybody here on earth. The first thing you need to understand about success is to keep yourself submitted, to keep yourself accountable. I I don't care if you work at the business or if you own the business, you need to have somebody that you are accountable to spiritually. You need to have somebody that you can talk to that can check you if you start to get off path to the right or to the left. I love the fact that God tells uh, uh, Joshua, uh, uh, hey, I don't care if Moses is dead. You still better listen to everything he told you and you better not deviate to the left or to the right. Now, that's being submitted to authority. It wasn't that I'm just going to listen to him because he's here. Even when he's not present, I'm still keeping what he says in my mind and in my head. My parents uh, are now retired pastors and they sit on the front row of our first service. uh, And I can't wait till we get back together again to do that. Uh, uh, But until then, 
uh, uh, I can I can almost hear uh, my mom uh, shouting me down and saying amen and waving her hanky uh, uh, when the teaching gets good to her. Uh, but I'm still submitted to them. Uh, uh, I still submit things to them because I'm still under authority. Pastor Robert Morris is one of the apostolic elders of Embassy City Church. And so uh, anytime uh, there's something big that I have on my mind, I'm submitted to what my apostolic elder has to say. Michael Exum is another one of the apostolic elders of Embassy City Church. And so whenever he says something to me, I take close, I pay close attention to it because I'm submitted to authority figures in my life. There's a local eldership here at Embassy City that uh, before I decide to make a decision as a leader, I will submit it to them so that we can come into agreement and have unity about the direction that we're going. Submission brings God's favor. Submission brings God's Blessing submission is where you find success. You will never be successful without being submitted. Doesn't happen. You can't experience success without submission. It's not the way it works. I can take you to uh, uh, the Gospels where Jesus wouldn't even start his earthly ministry until his cousin John baptized him. John was against it in protest. This is Matthew chapter number three. John was against it in protest. He said, I don't need to be baptizing you. And Jesus insisted, we must do this so that all things can be fulfilled. He was a man that was under authority, even to his father. I only say what my father tells me to say. I'll only go where my father tells me to go. I'll only do what my father tells me to do. Submission is where power truly lies. Submission is where you truly see God bring a blessing into your life. I know that's been an ugly word uh, for marriages. It's been an ugly word for, for, for leaders, uh, uh, especially like alpha leaders who are very driven. They don't want nobody telling them what to do. Well, I'm telling you, if you can't be submitted to earthly authority, then you are going to be uncovered when you go out to do anything on behalf of the kingdom of heaven. So keep yourself submitted. Point number two, please write this down. Keep yourself reminded. Not only are you supposed to keep yourself submitted, but you have to keep yourself reminded. Here's what it says in Joshua chapter number one, verse number eight. Study this book of instruction when? Continually. Don't read it one time, move away from it, and was like, oh, that was a good book. Study the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it when? Day and night. So you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Now, let me pause and just let you know that, that, that this book of instruction that, that Joshua was told to study was the book of Deuteronomy. I want to let that settle real quick. The book of instruction that Joshua used to find victory over all of his enemies in the land of Canaan. The book that Joshua used to have victory in the land of Canaan and settle all of the tribes of Israel into the land that was promised to Abraham was given to him by studying one book and one book only, and that was the book of Deuteronomy. The 34 chapters of Deuteronomy are what Joshua used to find victory in Canaan. Let me take you one further. In Matthew chapter number four, when you, when you hear uh, about the, 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 the three temptations uh, of Jesus, where Satan came and tempted Jesus three times in the wilderness, every single time Jesus responded to Satan, when it is written, was a quote from, you guessed it, the book of Deuteronomy. Joshua was told to take one book. And by studying that one book. He would prosper and succeed. I just want to I just want to say. Joshua had one book. We have 65 more books than Joshua did. 
We have zero excuse not to prosper. Zero excuse not to have success in what it is God has called us to do and how God has called us to live. So I want you to understand that you got to keep yourself reminded. You have to get in God's word and remind yourself of what he has promised you, what he has said about you, the authority that he has given to you. You have to continuously remind yourself. And listen, this is something that I, that I hope you get because uh, uh, the, the Bible is something that God gave to us so that we could feed ourselves spiritually. If you are only open up the Bible once a week when you watch something on, on uh, uh, YouTube or, or, or stream, you, you are spiritually malnourishing yourself. You got to keep yourself reminded. You got to have a word to stand on when times get hard. You have to have a word to stand on when stress rises up. You have to have a word to stand on when things are not going well. You have to have a word from God's word to stand on, not an inspirational word from a, a, a motivational speaker. You need a, an eternal word to stand on in time until God brings you the victory or you see uh, the revelation of what God wanted you to learn in a season or circumstance in your life. You must keep yourself reminded. I can't get off this point yet because I, I, I just want to challenge some people. OK, I'm, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And, and I want to challenge some people. What, what other word do I want to use? I want to exhort you. I want to strongly urge you. See how I did my voice so I could, you could see that, see the stance I kind of got into. I want to strongly urge you. Read your Bible, yo. You heard me. Read that book. Well, it's so hard and I don't really understand it. Read that book. Well, I don't get a lot out of it. And every time I read it, I fall asleep. Read that book. That is your lifeline. It is your source. Read that book. Start in a place that you do understand. Read a proverb a day. Read some something from the Psalms. Read Ecclesiastes. That'll give you some perspective on life. Read the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, understand the power of the Holy Spirit. Read the book of Acts. Understand theologically uh, our relationship with Christ. Read the book of Romans. Understand how we're supposed to practically apply uh, a God's word to our life. Read 1 and 2 Corinthians. Read that book. Because it's only when you read that book that you're going to prosper and have success. That's what it said in the word. It said meditate on the day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then. Once again, submission. Submission. Then you'll prosper and be successful. Reminding yourself. Remembering what God said. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Listen, I'm going to just go ahead and say it. Some of us are not succeeding and we're not prospering because we have more of other people's words in our minds than we have God's words in our mind. We have more of what other people say in our minds than what Jesus says in our minds. And I'm telling you, it's causing you not to prosper. It's causing you not to be successful. And before you think prosperity and success means that you're making a million dollars or you're driving, uh, uh, I don't know what car you like, um, a, a Mercedes or a Bugatti or a Lambo or a Ferrari, I don't know what you like, all right? You just might like, I don't know, you might like a, 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 a Nissan Maxima or I don't know what you like, but you know what you like. That's not the kind of prosperity and success I'm talking about because we know people that have millions of dollars, but they don't have any peace. They have millions of dollars, but they don't have any rest. They have millions of dollars, but they don't have true friends. They have millions of dollars, but they can't find 
fulfillment in their life. I'm talking about when we get this word applied to the inside of our hearts, it transforms us from the inside out. And so I want to encourage somebody on this point. You need to be reminded of God's promises. And you can only be reminded of God's promises if you read God's word. You can't get around it. Well, I'm not big on reading. Get on, get the Bible on audio. Rehearse that word. Listen to it over and over again. Listen to it more than you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of y'all need to go on a fast. You need to go on a fast from all media. And I don't know who this is for. I'm not saying that everybody's doing it. I'm not calling a church wide fast for Embassy City. I'm saying there's some people that's watching me here and abroad that need to go on a fast from media, social media and media. The news messes you up. It fills you with fear. It gets you angry. You wind up triggered. You need to go on a fast from media. You need to go on a fast from social media. I'm not going to prescribe how long you need to do it. And you just need to focus on God's word. Thank you. OK, I will say it. Let me give you a prescription. Three days. See. Holy Spirit is nice to you. He, he, he knows if you did 40 days, you would probably drop dead. I want you to I, ch I dare somebody to take the next three days. 72 hours and don't have any media or social media. You you already know Corona is still out there. Just stop. You don't need to. What you need to update on. You already know there's some people that recovered. You already know there's some people that's going to die from it. I don't mean to sound insensitive, but I want you to reprioritize God's word. So that you can calibrate your thoughts and be reminded of his promises for you. So keep yourself reminded. Okay, now I feel like it. I feel like that came off me now. Oh, <sighs> okay. All right, I'm good. I'm good. Point number three, please write this down. Keep yourself encouraged. Right? Keep yourself submitted. Keep yourself reminded. Keep yourself encouraged. Here's what it says in Joshua chapter number one, verse number nine. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I'm going to read that again. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Keep yourself encouraged. When you keep yourself reminded, it will cause you to keep yourself encouraged. You'll be encouraged when you know that 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 God is with me wherever I go. And I got to I want to work this wherever you go. Woo. Listen, Joshua is stepping into uh, the land of Canaan. All of the land of Canaan was promised. To Joshua and to the Israelites, they were they were they were fulfilling the prophetic word and the promise, the oath. That was given by God to Abraham that that there would be a a certain uh, part of the land that would be their home, their promised land. And here's what God tells Joshua. I want you to understand that I'm going to be with you. Get this, y'all. Hear me wherever you go. Let, let, let me massage that real quick. Wherever you go. I believe that some of you all are coming into a season. You are re-entering. You are making a re-entry right now and you want to know, God, where do you want me to go? And God goes, wherever you go, I'm with you. Well, God, I don't know if I should go here or if I should go there. God goes, you can go both places. Wherever you go, I'm going to be with you. Well, I'm just waiting on the Lord to speak to me because I just want to make sure I make the right decision. Here's what God is saying. Make whatever decision you want, wherever you go, I am going to be with you. 
See, one of the things that's happening with this reentry is that you are spiritually maturing. And when you spiritually mature, God can trust you with more. God can expand your territory. He can expand the boundary lines. He removes certain restrictions and he says, you can go wherever you want to go. I, I, I have processed you in this reentry time. I have dealt with you in this reentry time. You've humbled yourself in this reentry time. And now I'm trusting you to go wherever you want to go. Wherever you go, I will be with you. That should get somebody excited. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but that should get at least 5,000 people excited that God is saying, I'll bless wherever you go. You know where is right and you know where is wrong, but I've promised you all of this. So if you want to go to the left, guess what? I'll be with you. You want to go to the right? Guess what? I'll be with you. You want to go north? I'll be with you. You want to go south? I'll be with you. You want to go east? I'll be with you. You want to go west? I'll be with you. Wherever you go, be encouraged. Be strong and courageous because I will be with you. Keep yourself. Keep yourself submitted. Don't come under, come from under the Lord's protection. Heavenly or earthly. Keep yourself submitted. Keep yourself under authority. Keep yourself reminded. Never forget to remember that God's words are necessary and vital for our success. Never forget to remember that we need a word from God's word for everything he has called us to do. Never forget to remember that heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will never fail. Never forget to remember that his words cannot come back to him void. They will accomplish everything they were sent out to do. Keep yourself encouraged that no matter where you go, God is going with you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes four weeks of this incredible series called Reentry. My prayer is that this series has set you up to re-enter spaces and places where everything is the same except you. And I believe that God's going to allow you to see some things and do some things that you could have never done prior to this quarantine. So, Keep yourself, be yourself. Don't leave yourself. Come get yourself. Get that sight. And let's go upset the world. Listen, I'm so excited uh, that I got to give you this series. Next weekend is Pentecost Sunday, the 5th. Sunday in May is Pentecost Sunday, and I cannot wait to teach a message to you about the Holy Spirit. Super excited about it. Now, uh, if you need to give your life to Jesus, give your life to him. I just, just open up. Open up your heart. Open up your mind. Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and God, raising from the dead, and repent 
change your mind about the way you've been living, it's that easy to become a citizen in the kingdom of heaven. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thanks for giving. Thanks for being a a, a participator in what we do here at Embassy City Church to equip people to literally upset the world with the message, love, and hope of Jesus Christ. I can't wait to see you next week. Cannot wait to preach on Pentecost Sunday. I hope you have a great week. I love you guys so much. I'll see you soon.